Asia Pacific technical service uh, activities. So it's a great pleasure to be here today. Uh, what I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm talking about the trend of, uh, in terms of anti-corrosion pigments and additives over the last uh, uh, decades or so. And uh, most importantly, I would like to, from a technical perspective, not only talk about what product and performance we have, also I wish when you go back home you can get an idea how these products work, what's their mechanism. So uh, next time when you formulate your paint, you have a, a way of thinking through these uh, uh, anti-corrosion problems. So I will go through some background on corrosion and also talk about a little bit about the uh, uh, lead and chromate, uh, and also review s most of the regulations in US, in Asia, and uh, also uh, uh, in China. Uh, where are we uh, in terms of uh, getting rid of lead and chromate uh, from our coating systems? And, uh, and then I will talk about the products that we offer, and again, their mechanisms. And I will show some uh, examples, application examples today that what we can do uh, in terms of uh, uh, lead and chromate uh, replacement. Okay, uh, before I go on, let's just uh, review a little bit of the chemistry of corrosion. It's actually a very simple uh, reaction if you review your college uh, chemistry. Uh, the corrosion is basically a oxidation reaction. This work better? Yeah. Oxidation reaction of the metal, uh, but uh, because uh, during our humidity and uh, and uh, regular uh, conditions, you will have the existence of water and ion, which is a uh, electrolyte solution, and that set up basically builds a electrochemical cell which accelerate the oxidation reaction of the metal. So in this process, you are dealing with four actors. One actor is the metal, one actor is the oxygen, one actor is the water, and the other one is the ion, the, 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 the electrolyte within the, the system. If you want to do a good job in terms of anti-corrosion, you have to actually take care of all these four uh, actors. Uh, in order to give you the good result. <coughs> uh, traditionally, uh, lead-based chemistry and chromate-based chemistry has been very, very effective in terms of uh, anti-corrosion, and also very low cost. Uh, let me just give you an example of the reason that uh, why uh, these chemistries are so effective. For example, today, still widely used chromates, okay, uh, most likely we're using chromate, uh, which has the covalent bonding of six. What these uh, chromates do is that they act as a oxidant, okay? What they can do is they actually, for example, on a steel surface, it can further oxidize the iron, uh, uh, the ferrous iron, which is the iron two state, further down the road to uh, iron three. The iron three type of uh, oxidize, uh, uh, oxi oxides actually is a very hard, dense uh, uh, film on the, metal, on, the, on the steel surface. Once that hard, dense film is uh, formed, you have a so-called passivation effect, which actually prevent further oxidation of the iron uh, underneath, which by blocking oxygen and by blocking water. Okay, so that's a very typical. Uh, uh, mechanism for chromates. And the other good thing, so it can protect uh, steel or protect the iron. The other thing that the chromate is very good at is actually after this reaction, the, uh, uh, the chromate 6 becomes chromate 3. Chromate 3 sometimes under humidity and uh, elevated temperature, it can actually absorb some uh, oxygen from the, from the environment. So it act as a antioxidant sometimes and make the uh, chromate three go back to chromate six. So in terms of the four actors we, I talked about earlier, uh, chromates can actually do two, at least two of these uh, uh, parameters. 
And the most uh, challenging uh, property for chromates to be replaced is a so-called self-healing uh, property. What that means is that if you have a chromate uh, pigment-based uh, coating, if that coating is broken, which has the uh, exposed, the bare metal part, that bare metal can even be protected by the chromate uh, coating. The reason is that chromate pigments are somewhat water, uh, water soluble. So during humidity, these chromate ions can actually migrate out of the coating and cover your exposed metal. Okay. And that is the very good property that you want from your uh, protective coating system. But because of the water solubility of the chromates and also because of these heavy metal oxi oxidation properties, that's also make uh, chromates so dangerous. Okay. So that's the general mechanism for the, uh, the bad things, the, 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 the things that we want to uh, replace. <coughs> Uh, from the regulation and uh, awareness perspective, uh, ever since the beginning of uh, last century, that uh, U.S. has has al already a lot of study in terms of the uh, the, the defect of uh, lead in, in in coating. I remember this morning that uh, a colleague from Clarem talked about how dangerous lead is to our body. It basically can accumulate in all over your or your body, uh, especially in the joints. So eventually you will have fa uh, failure of your, 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 your bone structure and also your organ uh, failure, okay. Uh, and chrom chromium, uh, they can get into the air and, and water and soil as well. So we all know these are uh, very bad actors. Uh, today, uh, in the US, uh, basic uh, lead is completely out of all coating system, including uh, solvent and water-based system. Uh, however, a chromate is not is still resist uh, still exists in a lot of applications. Uh, although we also had a lot of the good success in replacing chromate in our coating systems. Uh, for the higher end uh, application, for example, military. Uh, construction, uh, coil coating, and uh, airspace, and chromate uh, systems still uh, are being used in the, uh, in the uh, uh, coating systems. Uh, in the, in recently, zinc also has become an issue. Uh, the reason is that uh, uh, for zinc ion, uh, people find that uh, if the water, in the water, the zinc ion concentration is above certain level, Marine life starts to uh, to suffer. Okay, so there's a regulation today in Europe that if your coating contains more than 2.5 percent zinc oxide or zinc phosphate, and your you have to have a dead fish label, the uh, aquatic label on your head. So uh, gradually we see that the, the zinc usage, especially the uh, pigment zinc. Uh, zinc oxide, zinc phosphate are gradually being uh, limited as well. Okay. Uh, China, uh, because China use a lot of, uh, makes a lot of protective coating, and uh, there is a statistic uh, saying that 80% uh, of Asia's industrial coating actually is made in China. So China in terms of the uh, usage of uh, anti-corrosion pigment, it's also very, uh, demand is very high. Uh, sorry. The first uh, regulation appeared in 1986 in, chi in China. Uh, today, the level is uh, below 90 ppm uh, for soluble lead. Uh, the regulation increased uh, ever since there's a very big uh, incident in terms of the, 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 the coating on, on coils, uh, on wooden coils, uh, which actually almost buried the koi uh, exporting uh, industry in, in China. So government starts to become more aware of the regulation issues. Uh, today, uh, in terms of uh, chr chromium, uh, the China standard is basically the same as the uh, U.S. St standard. Uh, however, in China, as you all know, uh, sometimes the regulation uh, can be very tough, 
but because of the uh, low cost uh, model that China is running, so there's still uh, a lot of the medium sized and small small sized companies are still using uh, Comet in their uh, in, in, in in their industrial coating. <coughs> Uh, this is regarding the rest of Asia, and I got this uh, data uh, from a presentation that published in uh, 2012. It listed uh, this, the status of lead use in other Asian countries, including uh, India. Uh, after this morning's uh, talk from a, a colleague, I think it needs, it needs to be modified uh, a little bit regarding the India situation. Uh, but the bottom line is that uh, the reduction in, in, in lead and chromium, uh, these heavy metals are definitely uh, going to happen, are happening, and that's our goal to try to push this uh, forward. Okay. Uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, a his, uh, history of Taylogs. Taylogs is a leading company right now, especially for industrial. Uh, uh, environmentally friendly anti-corrosion pigments. The company started in 1972, so it's about 45 years ago, as a direct result of lead replacement. Uh, because uh, at that time, uh, Halog's parent company was a leading uh, lead pigment manufacturer in the US. Uh, they were already heavily invested in the coating industry. Uh, because of the lead restriction, so they decided uh, to create a new business that focused on green uh, pigments. Uh, the reason that Halox is called Halox was because uh, the headquarter of Halox is located in uh, a, a town close to Chicago, uh, Illinois, and the name of the town is Hammond, so that's uh, HA stands for. And LOX actually stands for lead oxide. Uh, that because the parent company at that time supplies a lead oxide in the uh, uh, coating industry. And right now we're the world leading environmentally friendly anti-corrosion pigment uh, manufacturer. Uh, the company uh, as a business unit was acquired by ICL in 2013. ICL again is a, a big uh, conglomerate uh, company. Right now we are part of uh, the uh, one division it's called Performance Product Group. Uh, we collaborate with distributors in each country we serve. In India, uh, Engineering Chemical uh, Limited is our uh, partner distributor in, in the country. We uh, intentionally selected, because we are a specialty uh, pigment company, we intentionally uh, collaborated with all, most of the distributors are specialty driven and they are mostly uh, technical cell uh, type of uh, companies. All right, regarding uh, Halox's uh, product line, uh, there are basically three groups of uh, products. Uh, the first group is the pigments, or we call it inorganic uh, materials. And the second group is the organic additives, okay. Uh, the third group in, in terms of the chemistry it's mostly a hybrid chemistry, either a organic plus an inorganic uh, combination or uniquely uh, a hybrid type of uh, chemistry. Each of these group actually have different mechanisms in terms of anti-corrosion. Uh, all the mechanisms deals with the four actors, the metal, the oxygen, the water, and the, the uh, ion, okay. Uh, Sometimes they work uh, synergistically together. I will just briefly mention the mechanism of these uh, products. <coughs> the first group is the pigments. Most well-known pigments in the market are most, a lot of, there are a lot of phosphates, uh, pho uh, zinc phosphate, calcium phosphate, aluminum phosphate, different um, uh, iron, uh, metal iron phosphates. A dominating uh, mechanism for these pigments, the phosphate type of pigments, is that actually they release phosphate ions. They release phosphate ions. Okay. They release phosphate ions uh, during the uh, humidity conditioning or, or the uh, anti-corrosion testing, which is typically salt spray uh, uh, condition. 
So these uh, phosphate ions actually migrate with the humidity uh, uh, to the surface of the metal. Eventually, they form an insoluble a layer of uh, inorganic phosphate on the surface of the metal. So it does a similar job of passivation. It's passivating the uh, metal surface. In terms of the metal iron, these metal irons are mostly multivalent irons. Okay, and these irons have the either chelating uh, functionality or a coupling functionality. What they do is actually they work with your resin, uh, eventually to increase the cross-link density of your resin. So once your coating's cross-link density got increased, uh, water diffusion got decreased iron mobility decrease, and you, then your uh, anti-corrosion property goes up. Okay, so that is uh, the role of the metal ions in this uh, mechanism. We do in Asia, especially also in India, uh, promote and market a few uh, specialty pigment in addition to zinc phosphate uh, type of uh, regular pigments. Uh, a very well-known product uh, is called uh, 391 in the US. Uh, it's, it's not a simple zinc phosphate. It's actually a mixture of uh, zinc, a chemi chemical mixture of zinc phosphate plus strontium uh, silicate. By balancing the acid part and also by balancing the metal ion part, you can control the release speed of the uh, phosphates. You can also tune the cross-linking or stability of the metal ion. So it can give you the optimum performance, not only on anti-corrosion, but also on the stability and other properties of the, uh, of the coating. Okay, so 391 is a very universal uh, pigment. It can be used in different chemistry resins and also can fit both solvents and water type of uh, systems. And uh, SW111, is a product that completely removed of zinc. Uh, this, this type of product we actually offer in zinc-free type of uh, requirement uh, situations. It performs really well, especially for a 2K epoxy a primer type of uh, a system. Uh, Zplex 111 has been well, very well received in India market. Uh, this is a cost-effective zinc phosphate complex. It performs same as a, zinc, a typical zinc phosphate, okay? And uh, 430, uh, Halox 430, it's a specialty pigment, which is also a phosphate uh, type of pigment, but we actually add another uh, mechanism to it. It contains a ion exchange uh, material. So it not only has it got the uh, phosphate type of mechanism, which is passivation, it, only, it also have a iron absorbing uh, capability. So it can actually remove the free ions from your uh, coating system, which can further in, enhance your uh, uh, anti-corrosion property. Okay. Uh, 700 is a, a new product. It's an aluminum zinc uh, phosphate complex. Uh, it, it, it's it's very good in a variety of uh, 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 systems, such as epoxy, such as uh, PU systems as well. Okay. So these are the uh, typical uh, pigments that right now we're marketing in uh, India. So the pigment mechanism, uh, as I mentioned, are mostly passivation and also enhancement of the uh, uh, resin layer. Now we come to the organic products. The organic additives, their, their, their mechanism is different. Okay. Uh, what they are is mostly these products are very strong antioxidants. They actually block active oxygen. Okay. So by combining the, ox the organic additives, which is the blocking of oxygen uh, function, plus the pigment, that does the passivation and enhancing of the resin part, you can actually get the best result in terms of uh, uh, anti-corrosion, okay? So most of the systems, if you want to have the best performance, we often recommend two products combined together. You can get this synergistic effect, okay? 
this number of uh, organic actives we offer, uh, including water-based products, for example, uh, Flash 150, 350, and solvent-based uh, products such as 630 and 650. Uh, 570 is a very also a very effective uh, additive for water-based uh, coating system as well. <coughs> yeah. uh, the other chemistry, the, the third group I want to mention is the uh, hybrid type of chemistry. Uh, this is a very special special uh, pigment. This pigment is a phosphate type of pigment, but modified with organic uh, product. So it has all the functionalities I mentioned above. It offers you the optimum uh, uh, performance in, in a lot of uh, systems. So that's uh, 750. A relatively new product uh, is called Philox 550. This product is a unique chemistry, a uh, different mechanism from both the pigment and also the uh, organics. Okay, what this product is, is a surface modified nanosilica. The modification is similar to a silane uh, type of uh, chemistry. So it does two things. It enhances the uh, cross-link density of the coating layer and reduce water diffusion and ion mobility. That's one role of the 550 can play. The other role 550 plays is to improve the adhesion between coating and the metal surface. So by doing these two things, it can also help you with the uh, uh, anti-corrosion property. 550 is a clear liquid. You can basically drop it post-add into your coating uh, systems. Good. All right, let me show you uh, some of the uh, application examples of uh, these products I, I just mentioned. Uh, for example, uh, SZP391, uh, the versatile uh, product. Uh, this is an example of uh, comparing zinc chromate containing primer uh, and also regular zinc phosphate containing a primer plus with the, also with uh, SZP391. It's the film thick, the resin system is a 2K epoxy primer for uh, automotive refinish uh, system. Uh, the substrate is cold roll steel. Uh, the film thickness is about 50 micron. It can get to 1500 hours uh, in terms of the source free D117 uh, test protocol. Okay, so that's uh, 391. Um, Halox 630 is an organic additive. It's a very effective anti uh, oxidant in terms of uh, uh, anti corrosion function. Function. Here, there's a data to compare regular zinc phosphate uh, with 630, with the addition, just the organic additive uh, to replace the pigment, zinc containing pigment. Uh, real life example this is a two coat system. Uh, the, the bottom, the, the, the primer is the 2K epoxy, the top coat is the uh, 2K. Uh, polyurethane, after six months of marine exposure, real life uh, exposure, the organic uh, additive can actually outperform the uh, uh, zinc phosphate pigments. But because of the uh, organics are, tends to be more expensive than uh, pigments, so we usually don't recommend people just use the organic alone. Usually we recommend using organics to actually uh, promote or push the uh, inorganic pigments uh, further. Okay. Uh, this is an example of 430, which is, has the uh, uh, smaller particle size uh, version, uh, a uh, direct uh, P DTM uh, application, uh, 2KPU type of uh, DTM application. It can get to 700 hour a source frame while maintained greater than uh, 85 uh, gloss numbers. <coughs> Another example of chromate replacement, uh, one successful, one very successful example is uh, to replace chromate in edge primer, or some people call it watch primers. 
PVB-based wash primers with the combination of a 391 uh, fine particle version plus the 550 I just uh, mentioned uh, in multiple substrates, in a coral steel substrate, a galvanized substrate, and aluminum substrate. It can actually uh, compare to zinc chromate versus this system. They are very compatible. Uh, it's a very good example of uh, using Halox product that uh, uh, can be on the same par as a zinc chromate type of system. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the past 10 years, water-based uh, coating system has attracted a lot of uh, developmental work uh, uh, in US and also in Asia. Uh, for example, China right now, uh, all the container, uh, shipping container coating has to go to water. So a lot of the water based uh, coating system are being worked on, worked on by our customers. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, uh, in water-based systems, a lot of different issues, new sets of issues are created compared to solvent-based. One is this uh, flash rust issue. And uh, flash rust is basically, once you put a water-based coating on the fresh prepared steel, within a few minutes, the, 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 the steel will get start to rust it. And if you actually uh, add a flash rust inhibitor which eliminates the residual oxygen from the water-based coating, you can effectively e eliminate the flash rust uh, uh, issue. And our leading product in preventing flash rust is called Flash X 150. Okay. Almost done. Uh, a few examples of uh, water-based uh, systems. Uh, this is a water-based acrylic latex primer on a s matte uh, coral steel, 50 micron, uh, with a combination of 430 uh, pigment plus organic additive 515. Uh, you can achieve 500 hours uh, salt spray with a dull resin. Uh, another example is with uh, Halox 750, which is the hybrid version of the uh, pigment uh, in, com uh, in comparison with different phosphate systems. You can see uh, clearly that uh, uh, 750 outperform most of the uh, comparable uh, systems. Okay. Uh, I was... This is a uh, uniquely new product, uh, which actually is a rust converting uh, additive. What it is, is the, if you put this additive in a primer's uh, resin, okay, and uh, you don't have to prepare when you coat the protective coating, even when the substrate is rusted, you don't have to prepare the uh, rust surface that well, thoroughly. And uh, if you use a rusted steel, but with a primer, white primer that contains the rust converting additive, which is called RC980, within the few minutes, and that uh, substrate, that yellow color will be converted to a, a black. And then you treat this as a primer, and then you can coat on top of that. Uh, we are getting more and more inquiry of this type of uh, application in Asia, uh, especially. Okay. okay. Let me just summarize. Uh, today, uh, anti-corrosion, you can see it's a systematic approach. Uh, when you talk about anti-corrosion, uh, you have to really address a few parameters together. Uh, up to today, as I mentioned, in terms of chromate replacement, there's no one single product can replace chromate. Uh, but we do have real examples of specific systems that can perform as well as chromate systems. And uh, resin, coating formulation, and corrosion inhibitors all contribute to the anti-corrosion property of the coating. That's why Halox, as a specialty chemical company, put a lot of emphasis on technical service. Um, if you go to the website, uh, you don't need the uh, password to sign on, you can find more than 1,000 starting point formulas 
based on product, based on application, based on resin systems. And most likely, you will also find the performance data, which are often uh, source rate data for these uh, systems. And uh, go on, if you have a question, there's a tab on the website, uh, basically ask the so-called inhibitor. Inhibitor is our uh, mascot, and uh, we will actually answer your question within a day, and that's a, a promise from uh, Halox. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Any question we can uh, discuss later. <coughs> Check, check, my check. Okay, any questions? No? All excited for the lucky draw. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, go ahead with uh, the lucky draw. Anirud Kawa from Victor Agencies. Check, check. What? Four. Okay. There we go. Wow, Dr. Amit Bhattacharya. <laughs> Somebody said that you expect what you get. <laughs> yes. This is good karma, right? Okay. So you get what you right. expect. There we go. Congratulations, and may I please request uh, you, Mr. Hari Om Singhal to join us on stage and uh, present the memento to our speaker, Dr. Bodhanma. May I request Mr. Hari Om Singhal on stage? Come on, everybody, give him a big hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for being here with us.